So, welcome to one more session. We've been discussing um, exercise one, observing the self by the self. And we've spent the last few days with step six, trying to see the feelings that are natural to us, those feelings that are naturally acceptable to us, those that are in line with the right understanding. We have been recapping every day, just to recap very quickly. First step, observing the imagination, particularly the feeling in the imagination. Second step, trying to find out whether that feeling is naturally acceptable or not naturally acceptable. That feeling that I'm having at any moment, and this I have to do every moment, I have to observe, check this feeling. With this feeling, am I comfortable or uncomfortable? That was the third step. Fourth step, I tried to find out who is deciding the feeling. Of course, once I have been able to see this, I don't have to keep asking this question every time. It becomes clear that I'm deciding the feeling that I'm having at any moment. So I'm responsible for my happiness or unhappiness at any moment. In step five, we ask that crucial question, how am I deciding this feeling? It is clear that I'm deciding the feeling. But how am I deciding it? Is it based on right understanding or is it based on an assumption without right understanding? There also we will see that many a time, our feelings are based on assumptions and we may not realize it. We may have had some preconditioning from the past, some perception of the reality which we believe to be true and based on that we have some feelings. So some of these may be in line with what is naturally acceptable to us, you know, in line with right understanding. That doesn't mean we have completeness of right understanding. It just means that with my preconditioning, it happens to come in line with what is also naturally acceptable. So at that moment, I will have a feeling which will be associated with calm, with comfort. I will be happy with that. At other times, this perception may be leading to a feeling that is not naturally acceptable. And that those times, I will be unhappy. So it is never definite. If I am going by assumptions, if I am going by my perception of the reality, which may not be the whole picture, it may be a part of the picture, then my feeling will keep shifting, varying. And therefore, I will be unhappy at times and happy at times. But I want to be happy at all times. As an example, if my perception of relationship is the relationship to my immediate family members, then I may have a feeling of relationship with my immediate family members and therefore be in calm, be comfortable, be happy with the feeling of relationship. But with my perception of my relationship only with my immediate family members, I may not have this feeling of relationship with others outside the family. And at those moments, I will be uncomfortable with them. I will be unhappy. So my feeling will not be definite at all times. On the other hand, if I base my feeling on right understanding, that means I have understood, I have seen the reality the way it is. I am able to see the whole picture, then 
I don't need to think about this or I don't need to keep making effort for this. I naturally have the right feeling within at all times. And since my feeling is definite, I can be in happiness and continuity. That possibility is there for each and every one of us. But we have to make effort for it in that direction. We have to keep paying attention inward rather than outward. So then we came to step six, that we do need to have this right understanding. This is crucial for us. And we were seeing the feelings that are natural for us, the feelings that we do want in continuity. And those are the feelings of relationship, the feeling of harmony, the feeling of coexistence. So earlier what was happening was, since we were, you know, of course we are feeling, we are thinking, we are expecting all the time, something or the other. But when we are not looking from the point of pure observer, we are not observing this feeling. Mm. What is happening is, I am identifying with this feeling. I am identifying with that thought. So if anybody says anything contrary, a different thought, a different opinion, I react because it is like somebody has attacked me. As the consciousness, we don't really realize our potential. So we identify with various things. We could identify with something outside. It happens, it may have happened to many of us. Like for instance, you buy a car what we call being possessive about the car. No? You buy a new car, you spend a lot of money, you think it is very um, expensive and so on, and you want to take good care of it. But in that process, you almost identify it as you sometimes. Because if somebody says something negative about the car, also we get angry, we react, mm -hmm. isn't it? Or if somebody, of course, if there is some damage to the car, a little scratch, we react, we get angry, as if it is a personal attack. Mm -hmm. Then if we look from outside, we start identifying with the body. First it was objects outside, then, and also it is identifying with the body as myself. And this is something very, it's a perception that is very hard to get over. That I keep thinking I am the body. So if, if there is pain somewhere in the body, I suffer that pain when I don't need to. See, if I can see that this is the body, I am the self, and I can take responsibility for the body, then I will do whatever is necessary to get the body back in harmony. I will be able to see that pain is a symptom of disharmony in the body, and I will try to fix it. I will try to find out what is the cause for that disharmony and correct that, so that the body can be in harmony again. But I may not do that if I don't see myself as the self. If I see myself as body, anytime there is pain, I may be suffering. Oh, why does it happen to happen to me? Now I am, you know, it's like I am damaged. But I am not damaged. I am not having um, the problem. The actual problem was in the body, but it has become my problem now because I am in disharmony also. First it was only the body, but when I don't see the body as separate from myself, I also go into disharmony because of that. Similarly, if you look within the self, within the self, in this B2 block, I have certain thoughts, I have certain feelings, and they may be based on 
many preconditionings, perceptions, assumptions that I have about the whole reality. And based on that, those feelings I continue with and I feel that that is me. I identify with it totally. So if somebody expresses a different opinion, if somebody says something contrary to what I think, I start reacting. I get irritated. I get angry. But as we start observing, as we start um, looking from the point of the pure observer, and we see this feeling there, even though we may have reacted, the very next moment we may be observing that I had reacted, I had this feeling. Now, because you are observing, you are no longer identified with it. You are seeing that feeling from a distance, you can say. So now it doesn't disturb you. Now you are calm. Now you are comfortable. So anytime you notice, at any time, if you notice that there is a disturbance, ask yourself, who is noticing this disturbance? That is what you need to identify with, that point of the pure observer. So many times you will find that you started on this journey, you are able to make these observations, but then again you slip. doesn't matter. Wherever you slip, ask yourself, who is observing this, that you made the slip? That is where your seat needs to be. That is where, from where you need to observe all the time. So if you do this all the time and you don't identify with the thoughts, with the feelings, then you are calm, you are comfortable. Then it doesn't bother you as much. So ultimately doing this process, the whole idea is that we want to be in that calm all the time. And that is possible when we have the true whole picture of the reality then it is no longer some assumption about the reality, which we are not sure. So when we keep working this way, slowly these higher activities within us, they unfold. And we are able to see things as they are. So that is the whole uh, purpose of these exercises also. So, um, Perhaps we can, if there are no more sharings, we'll go on to step seven. Yes. So in step six, we saw that it is the feeling of relationship that is naturally acceptable to me, not the feeling of opposition. It is the feeling of harmony that is naturally acceptable to me, not the feeling of disharmony. And it is the feeling of coexistence that is naturally acceptable to me and not one of struggle. So what we want to do is to ensure that at this moment, right now, at this moment, I have the feeling of relationship not the feeling of opposition. I have the feeling of harmony, not the feeling of disharmony. And I have the feeling of coexistence, not the feeling of struggle. This feeling of coexistence and not the feeling of struggle. Now, if I am going by a certain perception of the reality, if I have a certain view of the reality, then I am, you know, if I am not able to see the reality as it is, if I am not able to see the subtlest parts of the reality, if I am not able to see this connection between all the units, then 
I can obviously not see the coexistence. So at those times, what will happen? I will see every unit as separate. And with that, you know, within us, all these thoughts, these feelings that we have, there is some disturbance that we may not even be able to see initially because we are not observing it. Some disturbance is there, but we don't see it. And because we want to not have this disturbance, we try to avoid it. So in the outside, you know, we try to avoid this disturbance um, by trying to control the outside, by trying to have situations under my control, by trying to have people under my control, so that I don't have to try to work with something that doesn't fit in my perception of that reality, without realizing that my perception itself is the one at fault, because the reality is not that way. So it's it's a constant struggle, constant battle, trying to keep the outside, keep every person in accordance with my perception of that reality. But when I am able to see the entire picture, able to see the coexistence, then I can also see that things are happening in a certain order things are happening with a particular um, in a particular manner things are unfolding in a definite manner and with that i have total acceptance of the moment of every moment so right now what is happening is I have some perception how things should be, how people should be, how situations should be. At the next moment, if it is something different from what my perception was, I start reacting. I start trying to change that. I don't accept that. I don't accept the person. I don't accept the situation. I start reacting. And I'm trying to struggle with changing all this outside. But if I could see the whole picture and I, if I had this assurance that things are going by a certain, it's a, in a certain definite manner, then I will have total acceptance of the next moment and every moment that follows. So it's like there is a stream flowing and you're flowing with that stream. It is easy. It is comfortable. But if the stream is flowing one way and you are trying to, you know, swim upstream, you're trying to go against that current, against the flow, then it is a constant struggle. Then it seems very hard. Life seems very difficult. So, this, um, you know, this we want to ensure, this feeling of relationship, the feeling of harmony, the feeling of coexistence at every moment. But we can start with this moment. If we can ensure it at this moment, then at least at this moment, we will be in a state of harmony. We will be comfortable. We will be happy with them. So if I can ensure it this moment, what is stopping me from ensuring it the next moment? And the next. And the next. So if I can ensure this every moment, then I can be in a state of harmony 
and happiness every moment so i can be in a state of continuous happiness this possibility is there in each and every one of us that potential is there we just have to have it unfold within us and though it will take time this can be our motivating factor this can be our guide and we get small glimpses small examples like chandrakala ji was sharing just now something that was giving you so much of anguish earlier suddenly you find that you are calm now in the same situation situation outside has not changed people outside may not have changed but you are calm you are comfortable so this possibility is there at all times every moment yes any questions or sharing or any observations is very nice Yes. In fact, we'll see that um, this, you know, what we are saying that this strength we need, actually, it is there within us. We don't observe it because we are so identified with our thoughts. So, if that thought comes that you know, so and so did this wronged me. Now, this is you know. a feeling based on some perception and i am having this strong feeling of opposition for that person that that person wronged me now there is nothing i can do about it or that's what i feel at that time and i feel helpless and i am disturbed i am unhappy and so i try to put it aside somewhere see the thought may not be there at this moment but the impression of the thought that i had in the last moment with that feeling of opposition somewhere that impression of those thoughts those feelings is there within us and so from time to time it surfaces what we refer to as sanskars right our feeling yes. and thought the imagination at a particular time Yes. So and yeah, we may not have that imagination continuing the next moment. Something else happens outside. We get distracted. Now our, you know, thoughts flow in that direction. Our feeling is getting influenced by the outside situation. So at the next moment, it may look like we are fine. We are happy. there's nothing wrong but the seed the impression all that is still there within us it hasn't gone anywhere even though at this moment my thought may be fine my feeling may be fine but every moment that i have a feeling not naturally acceptable to me and thoughts flowing in that way all of that is leaving some impression behind in me it's not gone anywhere it's not outside so ultimately the answer lies in paying attention inside when we constantly pay attention outside we don't see all this inside so we keep like i was saying you know we keep trying to control the outside situation the outside persons to fit our concept and when they don't we struggle we are unhappy we feel restless we feel disturbed we feel helpless but as we start paying attention inside and we start observing from a higher plane from the point of the pure observer now i am no longer identified with these thoughts with these feelings i can see that these are thoughts within me these are feelings within me and if i ask this question who am i i am the one observing these thoughts i am the one observing these feelings even though i have created 
perhaps these feelings i have decided these feelings yet i can be at the point of the place from where i can observe this the moment i observe from that point i can see that you know i am not this feeling only i am something more than this because i am able to see this and now it no longer disturbs so this paying attention inside that is significant and observing paying attention inside and observing of course there are many times when we pay attention inside and we are lost in our imagination that will not help because we are totally identified with that imagination and we think we are that imagination but what will help is to have that distance and be able to observe that imagination then you can see that you are obviously something more than that and that immediate moment you can see that you are not disturbed by those imaginations and again if we see you know when we are talking of intention we are referring to the natural acceptance really isn't it that yes, is why yes. we can see the similarity in all that yes. is the point of pure observer so there we are all similar yes but if we are looking at the competence we are really looking at the content of the b2 block and how it expresses in the behavior that is what we are seeing and so there there is lot of variety and therefore we get disturbed and we say that they don't intend the intention is wrong and they want to make me unhappy this is at the base of it but like you're saying you know once you are able to see the others intention is same as yours at the level of the pure observer we are all similar therefore everybody's natural acceptance is the same from there if we see then we have that calm we have that comfort we are no longer disturbed because being in that and that position there is no disturbance because you are able to see things correctly the more and more moments of acceptance we have we have a certain plan a certain concept that next moment should be such and such way but the next moment is not up to us what is up to us is my feeling in the next moment my thoughts in the next moment that is up to me so i can certainly have the right feeling for the next moment even though it didn't go my way so that total acceptance that you know no matter what that moment brings i can have acceptance that doesn't mean i don't do anything outside i certainly do whatever it takes outside but at the same time to have that feeling of acceptance that reassurance that you know no matter what is there outside i don't have to get disturbed because i can have the right feeling within and in fact if you see this is the biggest learning experience for all of us because if things outside are as per what picture i made then i think i am perfect i am fine there is nothing to do now i am good because i am comfortable but then when there is something that disturbs me a situation or uh, another person's behavior something that disturbs me now it is a learning experience it is a challenge that you can see that there is this disturbance within you and earlier you may have thought that the disturbance is because of the other person because of the situation outside being a certain way 
but now there is opportunity to work on yourself because now you can see that there is something you can do earlier that helplessness was there that once the situation outside is such and such or the people are like that what can i do there's nothing i can do but now you can see that even though the person outside may be behaving the same way even though the situation outside may be not to your liking still at least this internal environment within you can be you know in your um based on your um your own understanding so earlier also the decisions for the feelings were being made by us but we were not aware we thought it was all out there because of that person because of that situation but now the moment we see this disturbance ask yourself that question who is observing this disturbance from that point if you keep trying to see you will notice that the disturbance is no longer there because you are able to have the distance from your feeling and you keep observing from this point and slowly these higher activities start opening so in fact if there is somebody that i felt was contributing to my disturbance then it is actually a reason to thank them because now because of that disturbance you are able to observe that you have work to do that you need to come in line with the natural acceptance and experience that calm so it's true what you are saying this um uh, process you know slowly you can see how you are evolving how you are you know ultimately you have to um be at that point of pure observer all the time so that you are not at all identified with your thoughts with your feelings and we have no boundaries with you know otherwise what we do is we have some boundary the right feeling for somebody the natural feeling for somebody a feeling of opposition for somebody else and so on it could be within my immediate family it could be within my community it could be within a certain sect it could be within my country it could be whatever so we put some boundary beyond that boundary we don't see our relationship but if we see the full picture then we will be able to see our relationship is there with everybody and what that means is for me is that i can have that feeling of relationship so i can be undisturbed i can be calm i can be comfortable so see again we are how to solve it how to solve it like yeah. that i was thinking yeah yes. so we are seeing again the again behavior yes. part no we are seeing the competence part that is coming <coughs> during my uh yeah now yes. if we see you know so yes somebody mm. is behaving in a way that we don't think is right right and we want to correct them first of all first thing we have to see is am i getting disturbed if i am getting disturbed how will i help uh, the other person uh, isn't it yes. so i must see my own feeling yes. is the feeling right within me yes isn't it right now our focus is on on changing yes, the yes. other changing the situation so naturally we will be struggling with that we don't have acceptance like we were just saying you know accept the situation mm. the next moment as it comes and with that acceptance now you do whatever you need to do with the right feeling so you know like we were saying about flowing uh, with the flow or flowing against the flow 
like we you know if you've heard of uh, this yes. uh, lao tzu lao tzu uh, chinese philosopher who had mentioned that those who flow as life flows need no other force because with that flow with that calm within with that comfort within now you can go out and try to help the other person with that feeling of relatedness right now what is happening is we are disturbed we are having a feeling of opposition we are trying to change the other person so that may not happen immediately but certainly mm. there is no reason for us to become unhappy if we become unhappy and we go and try to tell them now it's like what they were speaking harshly now we are speaking harshly to them see we may be seeing our relatedness with the person with whom they were speaking harshly but now we are not seeing the relationship with the person who is speaking harshly and we also end up speaking harshly and then there is no way to come out of it or there is no resolving the problem so ultimately we have to see this what is my feeling within at that time with the right feeling then i can mm. certainly see you know i can have discussion with them with that right feeling that perhaps it will be nicer or if we do this maybe you know people will be able to understand better mm. or whatever the situation we can mm. try to deal with that situation in a better manner we'll be able to resolve the problem rather than just try to cope with the problem can you see that so if we are trying to control the result that may not be in our control mm. we can certainly make effort mm. for a better situation outside effort is there uh, but with the right feeling mm. within but we'll uh, come back to this there? again tomorrow if uh, you can uh, yes. raise your hand I again is... first thing tomorrow okay then we'll discuss it right meanwhile we will continue with okay. this working on step 7 can we ensure it at that moment at a particular moment try to see this in yourself and see if you can do it at one moment you can also do it at other moments now we'll switch to the hindi session